Hey everybody, Mike from Big Mike's Motor Pool, and today we're building a spreader bar for the forklift. So as you can see, we got this piece of steel beam. Pretty heavy duty stuff. This is probably, uh, I don't know, maybe 3 8 thick all the way around there. It's 12 foot long, and the uh, goal here is uh, to build this bar because I have a, um, a steel building I purchased. It's coming and getting delivered in, a, in about, a, about a week or so. And uh, some of the panels in this building, you know, the steel panels are 15 foot long sheet metal. And I was told that I need something that can distribute even pressure across all the, uh, you know, the panels. They said uh, forks should be at least five foot wide at a minimum. And mine are nowhere near close to that. These I don't believe are even three feet. So they said you could build a spreader bar or have a spreader bar for heavy equipment and use slings. So that's what this is going to be. This beam is 12 feet long and the basic design here is going to be to have it sit on top of the forks as you see and then underneath you know down here to uh, we're going to have some channel holding this on underneath to the forks. So basically you'll drive into it, pick it up and the channel will allow the steel to stay in place so it can't uh, rock to one side or the other and then to keep it in place on the forks where it's going to be at close to the edge here um, we're just going to have a piece of chain off the center go into the uh, center of the carriage somewhere or even to the side just to keep it from you know being able to come out so over here is a piece of channel that i'm going to use for the under section i started cutting already cut didn't come out too nice but i'm going to clean it up with the grinder hoping to get uh two eight inch pieces out of this and then i will weld them to the bottom of the uh, i-beam i considered cutting the web and being able to slide the forks through that would be you know for what i'm doing it won't uh, hurt the actual um structural integrity of this beam it'll still pick up the weight no problem but if i want to i don't know if i'm going to keep this as a uh, spreader bar or if I'm going to use it for something else in the future. So I don't want to go damaging the beam and anything that I can't reverse. At least with these channels, should I want to do something different, I can just chop them off of there and clean up the beam. I'm also going to have to put uh, some kind of lugs on this, possibly. Um, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do that. But uh, I could just wrap straps over this here at each end and then tie them up with a clevis. Probably not the best thing to do, but... It'll get me through this operation, but I'm kind of on the fence if I want to, you know, leave this thing together as a permanent piece to have in my collection of tools. It is nice to have something extra wide sometimes like this. So if I do put lifting lugs on, I got a few of these. They're stainless though of some sort. I don't know how well they're going to weld in on regular steel using steel wire. It probably, uh, won't be as strong as it should be, but it'll probably be strong enough to get the job done. So I'm going to get to work on this. We'll make, mark, mark out a few things, and uh, I'll show you how to do some cuts here. I left the camera off, and I was laying this out. And basically, I used a carpenter's square, some soapstone, a little marker -oo. Measured this out to 8 inches, and that's what, uh, what we're going to run for this one. Um, I just did one cut and like I said, I realized the camera was off So we'll just go over this again When I go to cut this stuff Or anything really if I want a nice uh, clean cut I use uh, something as a guide and on my uh, torch usually Depending on what side I want to go I can set this at about a quarter inch from the line and uh, it'll do a nice job. Doing a quarter inch from the line on this one would put me on this side. So I have to go and do it this way because that's the way I did the other one. It was on this side of the piece. So I'm going to set this at a quarter inch. You got to set it up at the top and at the bottom. That way you make sure you're square. 
could also check it with the square if you wanted to. Measuring is usually enough for me. And it's always nice to clamp it on, that way you have more range of motion with your hands. You can sit here and hold this if you wanted to, but it's just going to be a little bit more cumbersome. And we just double check our measurement quarter. A little bit heavy on that one. All right. Now this torch, a little hard to light. I'm running a propane and an oxygen instead of propane and acetylene. Usually when it lights, it lights like that. You try to give it some air. It gets a little funny until you back it off. And then you get your nice tip. You can bring her home where she should be. I'm running a one inch tip. Some people say that they don't like propane because it takes longer to heat up, but this big tip, it doesn't take very long at all. Give it a little bit of preheat across it. Helps it burn as you're going through with a little bit of heat across this whole thing. And we'll just sit there and wait for it to get red. And she's ready. And as you can see, the cut is fairly straight, nice, and, uh, you know, not perfect like a machine, but close enough to fit most applications. There's one. I'll clean that one up. And I'll clean this one up and trim it down the size as well. Two pieces are done. And the cuts are satisfactory. Um, I brushed these a little bit. Because uh, I don't really care. I want it to be nice, but it isn't like I'm going to look at this every day and really, really, really get upset when it ain't perfect. But uh, these are good enough for what we're doing. we got two 8-inch pieces. So we're going to mark out and clean up the uh, I-beam now. Alright, so the first thing we got to do is find the center of this. Let's see what our total measurement is. We're a quarter inch shy of 12 feet. Which I don't think a quarter inch divided up is going to matter, but we're going to fix it up anyway. So we're looking for a six foot. There's about six. This thing is very crusty, so it's not marking up real nice, but should get me what I need to get. Now my fork spread here, right now they're not all the way spread. I'm going to try to do this with this machine loaded, which probably isn't going to work out too well. Oh, good, we got it. Yeah, 
We're going to lower this down a hair and I want to grind the surface clean. All right, I cleaned the center because I'm probably putting a uh, something here to hook on to. Clean these two spots because we're going to put our uh, drive through pieces on. And in the end, I'm going to also have probably um, either those metal or steel plates I showed you with the hole in them, or I might just put um, tie down shackles on there, like you see on a trailer or bumper of an off road truck or something like that. Let's check our measurements again. All right, so I got my welder out, the uh, Miller 252, very good machine, and we're going to uh, start welding some stuff up on this uh, spreader bar. All right, so I'm just about ready to get started. I went ahead and remarked the outside marks. I've also went and marked this uh, channel on each one of these. I put these, they're just reference marks, they're not really anything super critical, but basically it's going to let me line this up like I want, and then we'll be able to have a, uh, you know, a general uh, rule of thumb about what we're supposed to be. And we're going to take the square, and then we can just make sure each one of them is squared up and nice. And then we can start welding stuff on. So it's pretty easy, just line everything up. I think I'm going to clamp this as well. Throw one clamp on each side. overkill using two but it's easier than having to worry about it not being straight because of pressure or whatever never have enough clamps in a welding shop all right so we're just gonna double check the square which we are a little bit off I think even if I was off somewhat with this, there's enough slop in here, I'd still be able to just fire these forks right through this thing and make it work. But, why fight with it when you can do it right the first time, right? So let's give it a few tacks, and then we'll uh, do the other side as well. It's a little windy here today, not terrible, but windy enough to where I went and turned the gas up on the fork or on the uh, welder some to help uh, with the wind blowing it out so we have a good shield around our weld. So this side is going to be the same. I'll set it up and then I'll uh, 
just run through the weld. Probably speed this up a little bit. so that's done then we maybe we'll do a test fit see how it fits on the machine and then we'll set up some hooks Looks like a pretty good fit to me. Now this, this is going to be flipped up. What I mean is these will be on the bottom. The main bar will sit on top of the forks. This way it can distribute the weight to the machine. It's not going to rely on these welds to hold up all this. However, it will be relying on welds here and on the ends when I put hook points. So... I'm going to go see if I have some hooks, and then we'll get back to doing this. So I took a look through the shop, and I was able to find some hooks. I should say uh, shackles that I do not like. Now, why would I use them if I don't like them? I, well, they're perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with them, but I don't like these bolt-on kind. Uh, they just, they're not my favorite. I like the kind with the, I guess they're forged steel uh, seashell clamp, I guess you call it. But uh, I bought these for, um, I think when I went to go pick up my side by side in Vermont, we might thought I might have had to do something to my trailer to make it a little bit more uh, able to, you know, attend to holding that for the ride home. But I ended up not using them. I think, you know, I don't like to return stuff most of the time. You know, if I buy something, I don't use it. Especially if it's something I know I may use in the future, I'll keep it. Um, you know, the wife calls me a hoarder, but uh, I like to prefer the term accumulator myself. Um, but see, now that in a job like this, I'm just shooting from the hip, and I happen to have something here that's going to work. So we're going to use these. I've laid some marks out, and these are going to go basically just like this. Um, you know, we're going to put these on, be able to hook a shackle to it. And I'm going to do one here. One on the opposite side, and then also down here on each end, there'll be another shackle. I don't have enough to put one in the middle, but I may buy another one later and, you know, be able to uh, add that. I may also later on add one here on each side, just so there's a diversity of points to hook up to. So I'm going to get started with these, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to lift something up real soon.
right, so that's that. Now we'll work on something to do with the chain. Which I think I found a piece. As you can see right here, um, I was able to locate this crusty gem. And there's no weight gonna be on the chain really, so it's just a, a keeper, if you will. So we'll flip this over and get started on that. So as I showed you, I had uh, this chain here that I'm going to use as my safety just to keep it from sliding off. A little crusty, but it'll do the job even though it's all worn out. To attach this, I could just weld it right to the beam, but I've got different size forks. Um, there's 40 inch forks on the forklift now, and I have a, a set of forks that are, I call them four foot. They measure about 52 inches uh, to the end. Uh, the inside so I want to be able to adjust and use this safety chain uh, at different lengths now the end I'm going to use this hook and I'm just going to you know clip it on the back of the carriage so I'm going to end up uh, just because it is what it is I'm going to weld the chain right to this uh, I got a whole bunch of these old hooks but you know if, if it's not adjustable it's not going to work correctly for different machines so what I'm going to do I'm going to cut this piece of angle in half at about four inches each, and then I'm going to butt them together and uh, drill a hole straight through half inch. Half inch bolt will fit through the link here, and uh, I'll space these out far enough to where I can, uh, you know, then have room for the chain to sit inside easily, and then I can run the bolt through with a lock nut and just, you know, a wrench is all I'll need to, you know, take this apart. So I'm going to cut this up, and then we'll do some drilling. marked out and the plan is going to be we're going to center punch this and I'm going to drill this but I want my holes to be pretty much uh, the same it, I you know it's not a super precise thing but I do like them to be in the same spot so then once I'm punched I'm going to join these together like so and then I'm all I'm going to clamp them all together tack them to the, you know or clamp them to the table then I'm going to tack these together so that when I drill this one it's going to put the hole in the same spot. So that's what we're going to do now. Get a punch mark in there. Got a nice, uh, nice fat punch here to work with. Easy to handle. I'm sure that shook you guys up a little bit. So we got to make sure we put this where we want to have our drill going through. So that looks about right to me. And the welder's all set. We're not doing anything crazy here, just a couple tacks to hold it. So now we're ready to go make some drill holes. And I'm all set up here to do some drilling. Bring the table up just a hair. I'm going to start with this smaller bit and we'll bring it up from there.
So I got the chain and the hook cleaned up. Normally I would not go and weld a chain to a hook like this. This is not the way you're supposed to do things, but for this operation, this isn't holding any real weight. It's actually just to keep this thing from being able to slip down past the edge of my forks, which is going to be well away from the edge. And uh, this chain is crusty junk. I mean, it really should have been thrown in the scrap pile, but I kept it for some reason. But it's perfect for this operation that we're doing here. So I'm going to tack this on and then fully weld it. Try to get it as straight as I can, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Just the way the thing... Straighten it out. <laughs> Unlike junkyard stuff. My apologies in advance for the poor camera angles here, but I didn't feel like dragging the welder out just to do this. So I got real close to the door and I'm going to uh, finally attach this. I'm going to just weld the outside and then a little bit on the inside. I'm not going to do the whole thing because I want to be able to get this off fairly easy if I have to in the future. I want to reuse this beam for something else because I don't really have a lot of use for a spreader bar. I can use it, but if this beam ends up being more useful somewhere else, it's going. So I'm going to tack everything together and get rid of these clamps and let her have it for the whole way. it for this we'll let this cool some take the nut and the bolt out get myself a lock nut to replace the standard nut and then we'll go and try and lift something let's go see if we can't pick something up what do I have in store for us to test fire this guy with We tried his full size telephone pole. All right. All right, so I'm only going to lift from the ends. No reason, really, with this to hook up the center for a test.
Well, I think the forklift spreader bar project is a success. Now I'm ready to go and lift off my steel sheets that are coming from my building, and I'll be able to get them off the truck and onto the ground as safe as I can. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoyed this cumbersome telephone pole that's now very easy to handle. Thanks for watching.